Starting about 6 p.m. Hello everyone tonight. and welcome to a my channel once again. My name earlier. is Quinn Brahmet. I'm just bringing you updates Chicago. from the murder of George area, Floyd in the United States of America. And this is a protest Organizers named I Can't Breathe protest, protest that the people, people of the United States, black people and, and white people alike, have all come out to a man protest who claims, uh, on the streets the of Minneapolis also the about the murder Protesters of our brother George Floyd. But they say the true justice and the will police be have become violent with them and they have started shooting the rubber bullets, uh, dispersing them with tear gas and pepper spray and as a result of that they have also turned violent and they are now burning things down much as I condemn a violent protest, I think that we could have stopped this from happening. We could have stopped this from happening. Things shouldn't have gotten this far. Now the city of Minneapolis has become, uh, you know, a ghost town. Most of the things are burned down to ashes, people's businesses and all that. That is not right, but when you let things like this happen, when you let injustice take over, this is what you get. People begin to fight back. As, uh, because they have had enough when people feel that nobody has their back when people really feel that you don't care about them that whatever happens protest. to them no the one is going to fight for them this is how they fight back this is how they rebel I keep saying that when our leaders refuse us, to do again, what they are ordinarily supposed to do, that is by listening to our plight and, and by fighting crowd, for us. Right now, you're the this is what happens. People cry out. People protest. People rebel. And we don't want that. None of us want things to get to the extent to which it has gotten to. And I'm counting. And we are all counting on the government of the United the right States to, that. to put this he man this behind bars. To end this he has been charged. The, 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 he's been taken to court Pentagon on Monday. Well, here it is. So and we get, hope that justice will be served. My name is Queen Rahmat. Thanks for watching. Couches, trash cans, and put them right in the middle of the street and lit them on, lit them on fire. Don't see... Uh, police presence da um, David, see, uh, see a Schumann dumpster is, fire yeah David is right there I think at the scene David are you there and then well, Leah what's the location him. here if we don't have David's audio it this is near the fifth precinct where there are several fires already we're yeah. four blocks west uh, of the oh. precinct what street are you on uh, we are on 31st and Grand, four blocks west, I believe, four or five blocks west of the 5th Precinct. A lot of people out here in these streets actually walking away from the precinct. They set the fires and are now walking away. We heard flashbangs earlier. There was a, a man, he showed us one of the rubber bullets that the police were shooting. He was hit with one. You can hear these chants. I might have lost you guys. There? We can hear we, you, we David. We can hear you, David. Sorry about that. We're... Can you hear us? H how long has this yeah, been going on? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you guys again. How long has this been going on, we've David? Been here, we've been here about five minutes, and the fires have about doubled. The number of fires have doubled in just the short time we've been here. We also heard a man driving by in a car screaming at everyone, riling people up, saying, we're going to Egan. So I don't know how much of a threat that is, how valid of a threat that is, but you know these protesters don't seem to be going home anytime soon. Uh, they're setting more fires. The officers are a few blocks ahead of us, closer to the precinct. Um, but from here, these fires are burning, blocking the street, and uh, the officers have kept a pretty tight perimeter, it seems, around the precinct. David, is that, uh, so is that a residential area right there? I, I don't see, I can't make out what that, if that's an apartment building over there. Are, are, are these all homes along this yeah. street? These look to be s small apartment buildings. And uh, even behind us now, they're starting another line of 
trash cans setting fires. If you want to turn around just to show them setting up, it seems every block they want to get done up like this, every intersection, they're starting right behind us now. Uh, is, the, is the strategy to block the police and, or block fire vehicles from coming in? Because the tragedy would be if one of these dumpster fires spreads to one of those big apartment buildings or some of these homes, and then you can't get a fire truck down the street. It would appear that, I don't know if that's their conscious strategy, but that would definitely be an effect. And any vehicle, any emergency vehicle would have difficulty getting to the precinct, at least on this street, from on 31st Street, no one's getting through. Well, it's tough, tough to watch this guy it just intentionally really... go out of his way to go, I'm going to take this fire and spread it and over here and over start here and another fire. And... Do you not see any sort of a, a police presence or anything there, David, anywhere near there? The only thing I see is an emergency vehicle with its lights on, and that is two blocks closer toward the precinct, not next to us at all, though. A more breaking news banner at the bottom of your screen. Military police now ready to deploy within four hours uh, if needed. A lot of this information is coming uh, from the Pentagon. Yeah, so they're just... They're not really really concerned. It looks like they're more concerned about being able to start their fire than they are about any consequences, David. Yeah, I would say that's right. And, you know, there haven't been many officers around. We've been, we were driving around this neighborhood. We left that overpass we were at earlier trying to get closer to the precinct. And there, Nicolette Avenue was blocked off by several buses and state troopers. But once we went a few blocks west and made a wider turn, no, these streets were quiet until we got up here closer to the precinct where you can see everything that's happening. What are they yelling there, David? They're yelling expletives. They're saying F-12. Well, hopefully, um, so I'm trying to fire trucks will make it over there in time to put that out. Yeah, uh, well, I, that, that, that might be tough based on, on what we've seen, uh, there's, there's no doubt. I, I did get a tweet, though. And those um, dumpsters are going up now. This is a dangerous situation now. I, I got a tweet. I will say, a few of these protesters, they did actually come up and thank us for being here in the middle of this, covering their quote-unquote cause. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it'll be interesting to see how pub public sentiment plays out on this in, a, in, a, in the course of time. So, uh, uh, David, David, keep we'll an eye on things for here. us. We're going we're gonna to check back with you um, in a few minutes. Be careful, too, please. Build Minneapolis streets for a fourth night. Not even the first night of an 8 o'clock curfew could prevent it. Crowds followed the National Guard down Lake Street, continuing through tear gas. At the same time, a popular cafe went up in flames in North Minneapolis, burning until the early morning when firefighters were finally able to put it out. I'm at 35W in Washington, right by Bobby and Steve's, where behind me they've shut down the freeway to an extent with a protest. Stepping onto the highways, traffic was blocked on 35 and 94 near downtown for a couple of hours, when people marched from an earlier protest near U.S. Bank Stadium. Drivers were forced to stop their cars, some trying to wait it out, many others abandoning them completely. Some in the crowd overtook a delivery truck, taking the packages and starting them on fire. Down, you can see the massive crowd swarming around that 5th Precinct uh, police building. They marched on after about an hour, heading to their next stop. For many, that was Minneapolis's 5th Precinct. Hundreds filled the streets around the building just one night after they burned down the 3rd Precinct. No law enforcement to be seen around 11 o'clock, but that soon changed. The National Guard and State Patrol reinforcements first came marching in along Lake Street just before midnight. And not long after, the Pentagon announced military police were on alert for a trip to Minnesota. Minutes later, police started enforcing the curfew and arresting people on the streets. Two and a half hours after curfew began, that's when the chaos cranked up another notch. We understand there's shots fired at officers near the 5th Precinct. The police were kneeling on top of the building. Next, crowds spread out from the main roads and headed into residential areas, lighting literal dumpster fires in neighborhood streets, throwing in anything they could get their hands on. People living there felt the frustration on many levels. I support the cause. I just don't support the action. Uh, that's, that's the problem right now, you know. 
to me, that's it's a, it, it's some thoughtless action, it's some selfish, thoughtless action right now. As the chaos reached a climax, state and city leaders held an emergency news conference, begging the masses to go back home, leave the city.